Imagine transforming hundreds of drone photos into a precise 3D map quickly and easily. Now imagine launching your drone to fly the mission autonomously. That's exactly what drone photogrammetry from the Maven app delivers. With the Maven app, you can plan mapping missions right from your computer or tablet and effortlessly send the professional grade mapping missions to your drone. In today's video, I'll show you how Maven turns complex photogrammetry workflows into a few simple steps. Draw flight grids with custom waypoint routes, complete with altitude above ground settings for perfect image overlap every time. Upload your mission to the drone, then set back as Maven's autonomous waypoint engine flies each pass with smooth gimbal rotations and precise speed control. Use Maven Share to wirelessly sync missions across devices or export your flight log to your favorite photogrammetry software for fast 3D reconstruction. Whether you're surveying a construction site, monitoring crops, or just want a cool 3D map of your neighborhood, the Maven app is a simple solution for drone-based mapping. Let's dive in and explore how to unleash the full potential of photogrammetry. On the Maven Pilot homepage, first thing you're going to notice is a cookies pop-up. Accepting cookies is going to save some of the parameters you're going to save later on. So let's go ahead and accept that. Now there's a menu bar that scrolls as you scroll through the web page. On that, you're going to see Mission Planner, which is still in beta. First time you go to Mission Planner, you're going to get a pop-up asking you to know your location. So I'm going to go allow this time and it's going to zoom in kind of to my local area. In the lower left hand corner, there's a layers tab that switches between satellite view and map view. And then in the upper right hand corner, there is a new mission button. You get three options, waypoint, photogrammetry, and import mission. Because this is still in beta, the waypoint and the import mission don't work. If you select one of those, you're gonna get a coming soon pop-up, but the photogrammetry mission works, so let's select that. All of your parameters pop up on the right-hand side, and I'm gonna zoom in on this park, and when I click the screen, I get my initial grid. At each corner of the grid, you get a green circle, and you can use those to resize and reposition your grid. So let's drag that out there. Now if you want to change the shape of your grid to something that's not four side rectangular or square, you've got these pluses right in the middle here between each corner. You can select those and resize and reposition your grid. If you decide you don't want those, right click and delete. And that basic initial grid shows 12 waypoints and 36 pictures. You've got toggles for position and coverage. Position is going to show you an estimate of where each photo is going to get taken. And coverage is going to give kind of an, of an overlap to show where your pictures are going to see. Uh, the darker the color, the more coverage in that area. So the photo distance here is 68 feet, 21 meters. And the ground resolution right now is 2.2 centimeters per pixel or 0.86 inches per pixel. You scroll down, you get your altitude, which defaults to 50 meters or 164 feet. You've got a toggle for above ground level, which does exactly what it sounds like. We're going to come back and talk about that a little more later. And your speed defaults to five meters per second. I'm going to go ahead and slow that down to three. If you go too fast, you might run into a situation where one photo is not done saving before the next photo needs to be taken. And you've got a toggle for fast transfer. With fast transfer off, the drone is going to fly the three meters per second or whatever you set there for the entire mission. If you do fast transfer on, the drone is going to fly at maximum speed when it transfers between columns, which will speed up your mission and cut your flight time down. Got an overlap and side lap percentage which defaults to 60 and 40. I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to 80% overlap and 80% side lap and you see that coverage grid gets a lot darker showing that we're getting a lot more coverage. You can change the direction of your grid. It defaults to geographic north. You can switch that to east west. You can run on the sides or you can go to manual. Now in this particular location, the prevailing winds come out of the Southwest. 
so you can use that manual to align your drone path with the prevailing wind so you don't have crosswind issues but we'll go ahead and leave that at geographic north and you've got a keep heading toggle with keep heading off the drone is going to start the mission at this green flag it's going to fly up to the first waypoint make a 90 degree turn 90 degree turn again and then fly back down the next column with keep heading on the drone will start at this green flag fly up to the first waypoint fly sideways over to the next column and then fly the next column backwards i think that is a little more stable so i'm going to leave that on you've got a fill grid which is going to add a lot more waypoints. One of the things you got to keep track of is how long is that flight. So clicking fill grid on is going to bump that flight time up to an estimated 23 minutes on this grid. Taking it off cuts it down to 11 minutes. You've got a camera angle which defaults to minus 90 or straight down. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave that at minus 90. On finish is going to return to home. If you want to change that, you can do that in the app. And on signal loss defaults to return to home. We've got camera presets for each drone. There's a drop down here. I'm flying the Air 2S. So that changes the field of view based on the drone that you've selected. And you've got a photo resolution. Now the photo resolution doesn't change the camera settings of your drone. That's only for coverage. So if you bump that up to 48 megapixels, you're going to get more coverage than you would with uh, lesser resolution. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 20, which is what my standard is. You've got a toggle for add waypoint at home position. We'll come back to that in, in a minute here. And we've got a couple of different exports. So first one we're going to talk about is export to CSV. So if I export that, it's going to export to a CSV. And then I can open it up and there is all my mission parameters. We've got export to Maven Share. We'll come back to that in a moment. You've got export to KML. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and then open up that KML file. And that's going to open up Google Earth Pro if you have that installed. And the first time I saw this, I thought, well, that's kind of boring. There's just a white rectangle there. What that does is allow you to use the other feature, which is import from KML. So if I go over here to the lower left-hand corner, there's a trash can. I can delete that mission. And if I go new mission, photogrammetry, and then scroll down to the bottom and go import from KML, and I import that, there's my mission. So that's useful if you want to share that mission or you want to save that mission for later. Now, coming back, let's look at the add waypoint at home position. In the lower left-hand corner, you get a home button that I initially thought took you back to the Maven Pilot home page. But what that does, if I tick that and then click on the screen, I get a notional home point. The notional home point doesn't change your drone. Wherever you take off from is going to be your home point. This is for planning purposes. But you notice when I added that home point, it moved the green flag from the lower left-hand corner and the red flag to the lower right-hand corner. If I reposition that home point, my start and end position are going to change, put it closer to your home point. Adding that home point also does some other things with the above ground level altitude, but we'll come back to that. So if I go back down here and add waypoint at home position. Now, if I export to Maven Share, I'm going to get a six digit code. And if I go into the Maven app, click waypoint, new mission. I have the original methods of creating a mission from scratch, importing from CSB, or creating a mission by flight. And now we've got the new from Maven Share. So if I select Maven Share, enter that six digit code, there's my mission loaded up and ready to go. Now, one of the new features in the app that's not specifically tied to the photogrammetry mission, there's a preview in the mission. 
So if I tick that, I'm going to get a preview of the mission. I can adjust the speed on that. And you're just going to see how that mission is going to fly itself. The little wrench allows you to do a couple of things. You can change between map view and satellite view and change some of the others, showing the mission path, points of interest, or buildings. You also have a KML export in this. So clicking the KML from export, you've got toggles to include the 3D polyline and include points of interest. And you have two different ways that you can export that. One is for the Google Earth app and one is for Google Earth Pro. So let's go ahead and export that to the Google Earth app. Select export and select Google Earth. And there is my grid map for that mission. The other option is to export to Google Earth Pro. So I select that, export, and I'm going to go ahead and email that to myself. And then if I open up that KML file, I get a drone flight here that I can double click and you can fly that mission in Google Earth Pro and see what your drone's going to see. So it's going to get to the first waypoint. Gimbal's going to pitch down to 90 degrees. And it's going to fly the mission and you can kind of preview what you're going to see, look for any obstacles, any issues with that. Nice feature. So now this notional home point and the above ground level. The terrain here is pretty flat, so it's not really going to have that big an impact. Let's go ahead and delete that mission. And let's move to some place where there's a little more change in elevation. So let's go up in the mountains here. And I'm going to new mission, photogrammetry. And I'm going to add a grid. And let's position this grid so that it kind of hits the peak of that ridge. Now that's a 31 minute mission there, but we're doing this for demonstration purposes. So let's export that to Maven Share. So let's click Waypoint, New Mission from Maven Share. Punch that code in, and there's my mission. And if you notice, everything is set at 164 feet or 50 meters, and it doesn't account for any of the terrain there, changes in elevation. Let's go back to Maven Share and we'll toggle above ground level on. Export that mission. Go back into the Maven app. New mission from Maven Share. Punch in that code. And now you'll notice that instead of 164, I've got quite a variance in elevation there. But that assumes that I'm taking off close to my my first waypoint. Now, if I go here, add a home point down on that lower road, toggle on above ground level, toggle on add waypoint at home position, export that, and then go back into the Maven app, waypoint, new mission, Maven share, punch in that six digit code. You'll notice that the altitudes changed to make them relative to that initial home point. And I've got a lot more variance in altitude there and it's gonna account for that terrain in that area. Let's go ahead and get that original mission back in there. So new mission, photogrammetry, import from KML, open that up. So now let's go ahead and get the drone up in the air and fly that mission and see how that works out. All right, let's get the drone up in the air. It's pretty windy today, so we're gonna see how this mission handles the wind. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. In the Maven app, I'm gonna select waypoint, select my mission. I'm going to hit the rocket to start the mission until I, yes, I want to fly, and the mission's going to start flying. You notice I'm getting a high wind velocity warning up in the upper right-hand corner. 
It's been really windy the last few days and I finally decided it got low enough to try and fly the mission. You can see because of the crosswind effect, the pictures are not quite lined up with the grid pattern. See the battery getting a little low there. Return home will start in 10 seconds. Alert. Mission stopped. Alright, because I started with about a 60% battery, the drone battery got lower than the app liked, and it's going to return to home. So let's go in and see if we got enough pictures to make a good map. Alright, that's been the photogrammetry mission programming in Maven. Remember, this is still in beta, so there are going to be changes before the final version comes out. If you learned something, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you think I've earned it, please subscribe. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.